Evening. <laughs> it's time to um, do this Q and A. Yeah, we've been teasing it for weeks, yeah. and uh, it's time we finally got around to filming it. So uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's gonna um, be a fun one. It feels a bit strange to do this one in our house. Yeah, we're at home. <laughs> we never ever record videos at home. No. I think maybe we've recorded one intro at home in the whole time we've been doing it, <laughs> something like that. Um, but we we've never we never do it. But yeah, we have got a house. This is it. <laughs> this is the deck in. This is the deck This in is where of we live. House. We've got quite a lot going on this week, haven't we? Yeah, so it's uh, Midsummer week. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what Midsummer is, a massive Swedish celebration, maybe the biggest like celebration of the year, maybe, for a lot of people. Yeah. Basically, family and friends get together, uh, normally a little bit of drinking, have a nice lunch and dance around a large phallic thing. Like a maypole. Yeah, a little bit like a maypole. It's uh, traditionally it's uh, meant to be a penis. Yeah, you celebrate like the fertility, don't you? Yeah. Celebrating fertility of probably of crops and harvest yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. I imagine. Don't know the ins and outs of it, but that's uh, generally it. Nowadays in the modern world, it's um, people get together, drink snaps, and eat pickled herring. That's about it. It's nice. Yeah, it's great. It's a great day. <laughs> but we've got that to come uh, this week, which is, yeah, one of the reasons why we've uh, decided to stay at home this week. Yeah. And the other main reason is that we're selling the house. We're yeah. selling this place. And uh, we've got a view in later this week. Yeah. So we need to tidy. Yeah. A lot. It's chaos here, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Not and that um, leads us into the first question as well, because we got quite a few questions about like do we got a house are we going to keep a house or like some kind of home base um or are we just going to be traveling around in the van and a little bit what is the future plan so well there you got the, <laughs> the answer to that we are selling the house hopefully yes, if yes, somebody wants to yes, buy it <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> if somebody wants to buy it we are selling it Obviously, we don't know. It's kind of the wrong time to sell a house. It's a terrible housing market, um, yeah. But we're trying it, at least. Yeah. And uh, no, we're not going to keep a home base for a while. No, the idea is uh, to travel around in the van uh, for however long it happens for. Yeah. Uh, a few months or a year or a couple of years. The only thing we're limited by is when uh, Charlie starts school, which is in two and a bit years' time. So. Yeah. That's the plan anyway. Um, we've got nothing set in stone. We've got no idea how it's going to turn out, but um, the first step is at least to uh, to put on a house viewing. Hopefully, a little bidding war goes on. People, uh, you know, <laughs> the, can sell up straight away. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, wishful thinking, I think, that, that one. Not happen. <laughs> um, like, I mean, it's still a nice house, but it's the wrong time to sell a house, so I don't yeah. think that's going to happen. No, it's not really the right economy. but. No. And again, when is it ever the right time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so I think the most frequently, that's hard to say, because, you know, uh, asked question is how did we meet? Yeah. How long have we been together? And why, not why do we live in Sweden, <laughs> but like how did we end up in Sweden and not UK? And yeah. also a little one is uh, did we ever live in the UK together? Yeah. Yeah, we've had quite a few questions, like variations of the same question, yeah. haven't we? So we met... Make you, feel, make you feel old now, yeah. over a decade ago. <laughs> over a decade ago. Over 10 years ago we met. Yeah. You're old as you are. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, we met when you, uh, you were 19. Yeah. 10 years ago, we both decided to go and work in Cyprus. And I went with my best friend and worked in a, um, a restaurant that in the end didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, we got moved to a different really nice hotel sushi restaurant bar type thing where you worked as a bartender. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I managed to get a job at a lovely little cocktail bar um, on the beach in a little town called Pretaris, a little touristy town, yeah. about 20 minutes away from Ayanapa. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time it's called Fig Tree Bay when you book it um, as like a holiday a family trip kind of thing. Yeah, that's the one. Fig yeah. Tree Bay was like that little part, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I worked there as bartender and you started um like as a waitress in yeah. the in the sushi sushi bit. Yeah. And we worked together for almost a whole summer. Yeah. Um, just as friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um ended up living with uh, three Swedish guys, uh, moved into their apartment about halfway through the summer. 
and um, you were obviously quite good friends with them and we uh, we became quite good friends all of us didn't we yeah. we had a big Swedish group and then one random English guy on the end <laughs> <laughs> So I'd fallen a little bit in love with Sweden before I'd even been to Sweden. Like, yeah. My... So he didn't really pick me. He just picked Sweden, and then he thought, "She's she's there. She'll do. <laughs> <laughs> she's from the right country. She's yeah. from that right part of the world. <laughs> She'll do. She's yeah. blonde. She got blue eyes. She speaks their weird language. I'll take her. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we started dating in Cyprus sort of towards the second half of the summer of that yeah. summer and I don't think either of us really knew like exactly what it was until you left mm. you left a few weeks before me yeah towards the end of the season and um yeah we sort of kept in contact and started visiting each other uh, after that didn't we yeah so we lived like had a distant distance yeah relationship for two years I think it was yeah it was almost years? that wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, before you moved here. Yeah, so we were sort of back and forth. I would come and visit Sweden a lot and you came to the UK a lot. You yeah. stayed with us for like a month, a month or two or at one yeah. point, didn't you? Yeah, something like that. And that was about the extent of us living in the UK together. We never really never really lived anywhere else other than Sweden. No. When I moved here in 2015. 15, yeah. 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 For you who don't know, if you come from Sweden and move to the UK, it's depressive. <laughs> It's so grey, <laughs> yes. and it rains all the time, because it was in the winter, which means that it is grey. Like here in Sweden, you get um, the snow, which makes it lighter, yeah. and you don't get that, you just get the rain, yes. and it's just grey and miserable, and I think we both felt, it wasn't just me, you came and said, like, oh, I'm not moving to you. No. It was just us both saying, like, we don't want to live here. <laughs> no, it was never my, uh, it was never in my plans to, to stay uh, at least in that part of England, anyway. Again, it didn't choose me. <laughs> you came along at the right time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, Mansfield, Nottinghamshire. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice place to grow up, but it wasn't uh, ever in my plans to stay there. <laughs> so after a couple of years, it was sort of like do or die, wasn't it? It yeah. was like, we need to do something. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still, you know, big into travelling. I was well up for moving out of the UK and ended up uh, coming here. Yeah. And uh, that was that, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that was in 2015, and um, and we've never looked back. No. It was good. Worked yeah. it in the end. Yeah. Here we are. Ten Here years we are. Later. Ten two. years. Yeah. Decade later. Two kids and owls. Yeah. And two vans. <laughs> and two vans. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Crazy. Yeah. What life throws at you. Yeah. So another question in this category yeah theme i was just gonna mm. say uh was did you experience like a culture shock when you moved here yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah massive <laughs> massive culture shock in in so so many different ways yeah uh there's so many good positive things about sweden and there's some surprising things that i found difficult as well coming from the uk but the biggest culture shock i think for me was like the social culture here is very different to how it is in the uk in particular sort of things like pub culture you know going down to the pub for uh, for a quick pint after work and meeting your friends in that sort of way it's it's it feels so so different here and i think that was the biggest culture shock for me and part of that was probably me having moved away from my friends as well it was probably a little bit of a double-edged sword it wasn't like all that but that was definitely a big a big culture shock the bureaucracy is uh, different here and everything seems to take a long time applications and stuff like that. Like you I need lived a form here. to fill out a form, and you need <laughs> yeah, and then you need to have a meeting about the form, yeah. and then a meeting about the meeting, and things like that. That's uh, Swedish culture for yeah. you. That is so basically in Sweden, everything revolves around you having what's the equivalent of like a social security number. Uh, what's called a person number, personal number. Like everything is connected to this. Like uh, gym memberships, bank accounts absolutely everything you can think of is connected to this number mm -hmm. and I lived here for over a year without one. You need a job to be able to get a Peugeot number 
but uh, you can't get a job if you don't have one. And there's a lot of people that weren't hired <laughs> without like, one, so it's like... It's like, oh, it just, it's, it was really, really stupid. Yeah, I fell into a couple of traps with that, and um, that sort of thing made life really difficult to start with. But I mean, we got through it, we got there in the end, and now I'm even a Swedish citizen with a, with a Swedish passport and everything, so, you know. It got who's there in the end. Now? Yeah, who's laughing now? <laughs> Miga Hoon's there, kid. <laughs> yeah, so it was, a, it was a long old process, but uh, we got there in the end, didn't we? Yeah. That was the biggest culture shock. Yeah. yeah, and then I saw somebody asked a similar question on, on a similar thing Does Tom like Swedish food? Was yeah, it something like, like that? Still, like pickle herring. Yeah, um, that's sort of a similar. They also asked about sewage drumming. Yeah, so pickled herring, yeah. which is seal, and sewage drumming, they're probably the two things that are most well known outside of mm. Sweden. Sjöströmmen, if you don't know, is essentially fermented fish that comes in a tin. Yeah. And it's not very commonly eaten here, not at least around these parts. No, I think it is more up north. Yeah. I think that's where, like, the tradition is to eat it a bit more. Like, here it's a person here and there that eats it, but, like, I've never met anybody who's, like, serving it. <laughs> no, and I don't think I've ever met anybody that's, like, our age group that eats it and enjoys it. No. Or, I don't... There's not a lot of people that have even tried it, I don't no. think. And you can find multitudes of videos of people trying sewer streaming online. Definitely go and watch one, because... I've never smelt it, I've never no, tasted no, it. I haven't, I haven't. And, but it looks and smells disgusting. You can imagine that it is. You're supposed to open the tin underwater because it smells mm. so bad. Yeah. It like fills the room. It's fermented fish, so mm. you can imagine what it's like. But uh, yeah, I, I, I would try it if somebody offered me it just for shock value. I can imagine it's absolutely disgusting mm. and, um, and probably not my sort of thing, to be honest. No. Um, but sil, uh, which is pickled herring, uh, is great. Yeah, mm. really, really like sil. Yeah. Uh, I eat it uh, whenever it's served on all the sort of Swedish holidays and occasions and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's really nice. Uh, it sounds a bit weird. Pickled fish, pickled herring. Mm. Um, but yeah, I like I like Sil. Sil's great. Yeah. So a few people asked uh, what we work with, um, variations of this question. You know, what do we do for, for work? What do we do for jobs? Um, but we had uh, one that was a little bit longer that said, what do we work with and how did we manage to keep our jobs during the cancer treatment? at the same time we were caregivers to our children. This one I think is actually a really interesting one because it was probably quite unique to us. There aren't really that many systems in place for what we've been through specifically. Yeah. Cancer treatment with small kids and jobs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so I work as a occupational therapist and I work with people with different kinds of disabilities that they are most of the time born with. As I work with them from that they're 16 up until whenever they need help basically but I have been off on parent leave since Bella was born no before Bella was born because uh, here it was because of Covid you were not allowed to work as I was around a lot of people and stuff like that uh, after you went into week 20 of the pregnancy so I have been off because of pregnancy and babies and stuff since about, I don't know, was it like April 21 or something like that? <laughs> something like that, on, uh, on parent leave. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're an occupa occupational therapist, but you're basically a full-time mum, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you have been for a couple of yeah. years. Just a side note, because I know that in a lot of countries it's not like this, but here you get, uh, what is it, 480 parent days between between us mm. and um, before the baby is one you don't have to take a single paid parent day which means that you can be home for as long as I have been uh, on parent leave. Yeah so we ended up not uh, getting paid for a lot of our parent leave or a lot of Molin's parent leave and living quite poor in order to have more time off with kids. Yeah. Um, so it worked out quite well in that way um, because we were willing to sort of cut out the luxuries and uh, and live a little bit poor. So, um, as you said, 480 days of paid parent leave here, which you can split between each other. So I have to take 90 days and you have to take yeah. 90 days and the rest you can um, split them however you like. So, um, yeah, the parental leave system in Sweden is uh, one of the massive positives about being here. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah really yeah and i uh, work with the media so i'm mostly work with film editing and, and video editing and stuff like that um i have a couple of clients that i edit podcasts for uh and things like that sounds really boring 
Does mine sound fun, you mean? <laughs> so I work with um, with mostly video projects, mostly editing and stuff like that. Um, and I do a lot of my work, or did a lot of my work from home. Which is why at the beginning of the cancer journey, I was able to carry on working while I had the kids. I would have the kids in the daytime, and then when they went to bed, I would start working. Um, which obviously worked for a little while, but I ended up getting burnt out pretty quickly. Yeah, I think uh, if I've understood it right, this is also a bit different from other countries, how it works with sick leave here. Mm. Because here you get sick leave and you can be off for however long the doctor tells you to be off. Yeah. So I'm still on sick leave now, which means that when I go back to work, I got all my parent days left. So that means that these eight months where I've been on sick leave, I've saved eight months of parent days. So yeah. when I go back to work, it's gonna be going back to taking care of their children. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is also a nice like system because you don't have to worry when you get sick. And there we also got VAB, Board of Barn. Yeah. Uh, which I don't really know. Child care days. Yeah. yeah. Which you have been taking for the last couple of months. For, few months yeah really. yeah exactly uh, where it is you get paid to take care of the kids because me who should be taking care of the kids are poorly yeah so that's a really good thing yeah it's a way. really really good thing it's a it's a really really good system and we've been uh, we've been really lucky that we've been able to take advantage of it it is one of the reasons why we pay such high tax in mm. Sweden the tax rates here are insanely high if you compare them to other countries but it's things like this that you you really see the benefits from, I think, yeah. from that. We've said it before that there's so many people in the world that go through a similar battle to what we've been going through, but then have more stuff on top of mm. that. Financial worries, maybe if you don't have free health care, yeah. or worries about losing your job because you have to take a lot of time off for cancer treatment and things like that. And we just think, like, God, it must just be awful like we know how hard it is to go through a cancer battle and then to have that stuff on top yeah. it's just i feel so sorry for people that are in that situation mm, absolutely. um so i do I, I do feel really grateful that we're we don't have those things to worry about yeah all right well we've answered a few there at least anyway and the yeah. evening is getting on yeah. um we've got midsummer tomorrow so uh let's go and do a bit of midsummer celebration and uh, we'll answer the rest of these questions tomorrow yeah is that good sounds good cool we'll see you uh, tomorrow What have you found? Smultron on Mormo's back garden. That's a bonus, isn't it? Hey Charlie, how nice do you look in your shirt? Super nice. Super nice. Bella. Is it nice? Are you eating ice cream? Yeah. Two ice creams today. Painted everybody's toes, didn't you, yesterday, Charlie? Look nice, don't they? You wanted your. What colour did you want yours? Um, like a cycle. Like a fire truck, yeah. Yo, you. Well, you chose this peachy colour and the green for me, didn't you? So just before we uh, carry on with this little Q&A, um, I would just like to take a minute to talk about something incredible uh, that a very good friend of mine is doing in the name of raising money to fight cancer. So one of my oldest and best friends, Jordan, has decided to run the Nottingham Half Marathon in September later this year in order to raise money for Bowel Cancer UK. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this channel and will know why Bowel Cancer UK is a really important charity to us. We've spent the best part of a year going through a battle against an aggressive form of colorectal cancer. So, of course, it's a really important charity to us and Jordan has decided to do the marathon on behalf of raising money for them. Now, I'm sure Jordan won't mind me saying this, but he ain't exactly a marathon runner. So this is a really, really big challenge for him. 
uh, and it's something that he's dedicating a lot of time to doing. And he's using Molin as his inspiration for doing so. He's just giving Paige outlines Molin's story as well as some other close family members that have gone through something similar. So we think it's a really lovely thing that he's raising money on behalf of us, on behalf of his grandma, on behalf of everybody in the UK and beyond who's fighting this awful disease. Jordan set himself up a Just Giving page uh, where he's attempting to raise £1,000 for the charity. All proceeds go to Bowel Cancer UK and it would mean the absolute world to us if we could help him reach that goal and to be honest, go way above it if we can. So I'll leave the link in the description. Please head over there and donate a little bit if you can. Whether it's just a couple of quid, a couple of dollars, whatever, uh, every little helps in this case. All proceeds go to Bowel Cancer UK and go towards supporting Jordan on his uh, half marathon run. So um, good luck, buddy. Uh, we're rooting for you. All right, we're back. It was a uh, really, really nice time, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. Kids had a great time. I think everybody has a good time on Midsummer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good happy event yeah. normally. So yeah, it was really good. There was no uh, dancing around the Midsummer stonk. No. But uh, there was plenty of other celebrations a bit, anyway. A bit too hot this year. It was a little bit too hot, yeah, it's roasting. So, uh, all right, let's uh, carry on with this Q&A, shall we? Yeah, uh, we've had a lot, a lot of questions about language. <laughs> yeah. Uh, both for us and for the kids and uh, just loads about language. All oh, right, yeah, cool. <laughs> the first question would be, do we speak just Swedish to the children or do we also speak English? And uh, we mix. Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear a lot of people who say like, because English is your first language, that you should only speak English with the children and I should only speak Swedish with the children. Yeah. And I don't really know why, to make them less confused maybe. Mm. Uh, but we, everybody speaks everything. Yeah. And uh, we do mix a lot. It's a lot of uh, Swinglish in this house. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> they speak really good English and really good Swedish nothing wrong but yeah. sometimes they get it mixed up and it's like half and half <laughs> yeah 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 to say that charlie's only three years old he's got such a grasp on both languages and even the fact that he can differentiate between english and swedish mm. is nuts yeah. i never thought it'd happen no. at three years old no but yeah obviously they sometimes get confused i get confused yeah. like when you've got two languages going off all over the place it's yeah. uh, it's not easy but easy. uh but it's uh, it's good yeah we speak uh, very mixed actually everything is swinglish yeah. it can be sentences can be swinglish yeah. like you start in one language, language and finish in another yeah. so it's obviously confusing to, to kids and the way that like charlie at least switches between the two languages mm. is crazy yeah when my dad and his wife were here and your mum and dad were here at the same time mm. he would they would play they would be playing all together and charlie would speak english to my dad and swedish to your parents yeah. and it's like how how can a three-year-old's yeah. brain like <laughs> switch over like that? So it's yeah. really actually quite impressive. It is. We um, we just mix. It's a massive, massive mix of Swedish and English. And educationally, it's probably not the right way to do it. There's probably <sighs> better ways that we could have gone. But this is really working for us, and the yeah. kids are picking up both languages well. And, yeah. And I my Swedish has gotten a lot better since we had Charlie. Mm. I've sort of forced myself to speak more. Swedish, even though I could understand it well, I, did, I didn't speak it a lot. No, you, when you when you spoke Swedish, it was really good, but mm. you weren't comfortable with it, which is also one of the questions. Mm. It's, um, are you comfortable speaking Swedish and how long did it take? Yeah, so I've been living here for eight years now in August, and I started learning a little bit before I came here, but not a lot. No. It took me probably a few years before I was confidently I could confidently speak properly yeah it was probably a few a couple of years a few years before you like joined in on conversations when we had like family occasions kind of yeah thing. I definitely remember understanding Swedish a long time before I could speak it yeah like I, I understood very very well from pretty early on and but you answered me... questions when people asked you something, but you didn't like join in to have a conversation. Yeah, for the first sort of period, it's a lot of the time like my understanding of the language was a lot slower than the conversation. Mm. So it's like I would, it would click with me, but you would have already moved on and mm. talk about the next thing. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it was difficult to start with for sure. Yeah. It's hard like not to feel like a bit of an outsider. Mm. Try to like yeah. squeeze your way into the conversation yeah, a little it's bit. Really it's hard. Um, not easy, but now it's uh, not a problem at all. I'm pretty much 
pretty much fluent. Yeah. Almost, at least. I would say you're fluent. You still speak get some, really, really well. Still get some bits wrong, but... Um, yeah, but so do I in English, so I mean, like... Yeah, but not on the same level. Do we plan to home educate our children? And uh, the answer is no. No, that's not in our plans at the moment. Uh, a lot of people that follow this sort of lifestyle, the, the van life thing, the digital nomad mm. trend. A lot of people educate their kids uh, from home or from the van, but we're that's not in our plans at the moment, no. is it? We've got a bit of a sort of loose, vague plan over the next few years where we're going to sell the house, hopefully, this week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Heights bidder, come on. Yeah. And then we've got sort of two years before Charlie needs to start school. Kids start school just as they're turning six here. So we've got two years and the plan is to travel around Europe for as long as we feel like it, basically. Yeah. Um, that could be two months if everybody's hating life and nobody gets it. I don't think it will be because we all love being in the van and stuff. I think the idea is to, at least this year, um, head down maybe to Spain and Portugal for the winter, um, somewhere a little bit warmer, and then just um, see what, Europe, what the rest of Europe has to offer. There's a lot of Europe that we haven't seen. And it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun to do it in a van. It all um, depends on my scan results, I guess, in the autumn where we end up. Yeah. But the plan and hopes are to get somewhere a bit warmer. Yeah. Because we don't want to be here in the cold um, because of my, again, I can't say it. Neuropathy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the plan is to head somewhere warmer so I can hopefully uh, cope a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan anyway. And then obviously in a couple of years time, when it's time for Charlie to start school, we're gonna hopefully settle down somewhere a little bit more rural than where we live now. Move, yeah, somewhere with a little bit more land, somewhere we can grow our own stuff and li live a little bit more, I'm gonna say off grid when we buy somewhere, but a little bit more to ourselves and be a bit more like self-sustaining. Yeah. That's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, and exactly. then Charlie will start school in one way or another uh, when he's uh, just about to turn six. And then there was another question that asked if we were planning on doing any big overland trips in the yeah. van. And that sort of answers that, I guess, doesn't yeah. it? Um, yes, Spain and Portugal on the cards at the moment. Uh, got a very, very close friend in Belgium. So um, hopefully we'll see him maybe yeah. even this summer. Yeah. Uh, and then um, wherever else in Europe we fancy going for now. So if you've got any suggestions, if you've travelled anywhere uh, within Europe, particularly in a van or a motorhome or whatever, um, let us know in the comments, because uh, we'd love to hear them. Uh, we're very open. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few ideas, but... Um, we don't have any set plans. No, we've got no set plans. So, um, but yes, definitely long overland trips. Yeah. Uh, but where to? Who knows? Uh, this one's for you. How did your stoma feel after swimming in a lake? And um, to be fair, it didn't feel any different from before swimming in the lake. <laughs> no, did it not? <laughs> no, it wasn't really like, affected. Uh, not at all. Like, yeah, a bit more wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprising. <laughs> didn't feel uncomfortable or like didn't feel different. No, you don't feel different okay. at all. You don't, I, don't, I don't feel different in the water and the stoma doesn't feel different That's at all. That's really nice. The only thing is that it's obviously gets wet and then it's a bit like you have to dry it kind mm. of thing uh, for it to not be uncomfortable for you on your skin when you're done swimming, uh, but actually in the water or after, just after it doesn't, nothing changes kind of thing. No, that's good to know, yeah. That's nice to hear because you, one of those people that love going swimming. Yeah. You love swimming in lakes. We yeah. do it all summer, every yeah. year. So it's nice that, uh, that that's not one of the things that's been affected yeah. by having a colostomy. Yeah. So that's really good. And then there was another one that was um, just for you as well. Has the Swedish healthcare system met your needs throughout this journey? That's a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Is it is a hard because one. Because the Swedish healthcare system is split very, very obviously between Vårdcentralen, which mm -hmm. is like your GP, general practitioner, sort of low level general healthcare thing, and like specialist healthcare. Yeah. When you got in, I'll, I'll let you, sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is for you, but I'm going to yeah. answer it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so it's different in that way I guess. I only thought from when I got diagnosed. Yeah, so before I got diagnosed it was like a massive thing to even get an appointment and I went to many 
many different kind of doctor's appointments and everybody kept saying, you just have a, had a baby, so it's not strange if you got stomach problems. Go home, make sure you drink plenty of water. And obviously it was a bit more than that. <laughs> a little bit. That's, I think that's a different story. Yeah, I it feel is. like it's this yeah. should be just from when I got diagnosed and onwards. And then I do feel like, yes, they have met my needs on almost every single level. Mm. I think they've been brilliant. And then I also think that, well, it's two um, things or parts, whatever you say, throughout this journey where I feel like they completely failed, to be honest, because obviously I needed to remove my uterus and bits. And <laughs> even though I still got my ovaries, I got, uh, I went through, started to go through menopause. And I've asked so many questions about this and I've, like before surgery and after surgery and during all the time I was in the hospital and everything and not one time have I met a GYN doctor that has met my questions. It's all been, oh, we'll see what we can do. We'll see, we'll, we'll look that up for you. And then it's like a half rushed answer. We're like, oh, it's not really our, on our plate. And maybe they don't think it was a big thing because the tumor wasn't in the uterus and whatever, but I still had that removed and I still need to take hormone what do you say, replacement mm. now. Uh, and it has affected my life a lot, uh, but nobody has really met my needs there at all, to be honest. Yeah, I think it, it feels really harsh to say that nobody cares about it. Yeah, but it's true. But it sort of feels like that, yeah. doesn't it? And then the last thing is the mental health bit. Like, it just feels like everybody does say that it's really important and you need to talk to somebody, but nobody has somebody for me to talk to. I think that's a bit sad because it is really hard if you're struggling mentally to reach out to somebody and say, hey, I need help. Mm. Um, so I think it's something that it should serve you a little bit, to be honest. Definitely, it feels, whenever they talk about mental health, it feels like they're ticking boxes. Yeah. It feels like, okay, I've mentioned mental health. If you're struggling, go and talk to somebody, tick. Yeah. And that's like how it feels. Yeah. That, yeah, they say it's important, but they're not showing that it's important. No. I think it should be, hey, we've got this person, whether it's a psychologist or whatever, mm. you've got booked appointment here. Yeah. And you have to, you, that's mm -hmm. just part of your treatment. Yeah. You go and talk about yeah. it. When you're struggling with your mental health, the hardest thing a lot of the time is to do something about it, is to reach out and say, hey, I need to talk about this. Yeah. Not easy. And um, I feel like that's probably, for me, from my side, that's the bit where the healthcare system has dropped the ball. Yeah. Obviously for you with the, uh, with the GYN problems mm -hmm. and stuff, it's hard to say from this side, mm -hmm. but for me looking in, from the outside looking in, that's a really big uh, failure. Yeah. Actually, unfortunately. So a bit more of an easy question. <laughs> a bit more lighthearted maybe, yeah. give us an easy one. Uh, what are the kids' names? <laughs> what are the kids' names? Oh, I can answer that one, I yeah. think. Uh, Charlie and Isabella. Yeah. And the last question for this time I think and that is what is our hopes for the future? That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, we've discussed we probably quite a lot of that I think haven't we yeah. already? Yeah. So obviously uh, selling the house, hmm? moving into the van hmm? and um, just live life. <laughs> live life uh, after this shit. Yeah. <laughs> shit year to be honest. Yeah. So uh, just go and enjoy life a little bit. Yeah to just spend time with our family, I think, is a big thing for me. I feel like I missed out on eight months, so now all I want to do is just be with you guys, and I don't really care where we are or what we do, uh, as long as we're together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. And maybe get married at some point. We got engaged, like... Two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> uh, and at some point, we'll probably get married, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see, if you're lucky enough. <laughs> And then I guess um, sort of other hopes and plans for the future is just being a little bit more self-sustainable. Um, a little bit like I mentioned before about buying, you know, maybe a house with a bit more land in the mm. future. And, you know, I got a dream about growing sweet potatoes for some reason. <laughs> I don't even know if you can do that in Sweden. <laughs> I, don't know. I just, I, lo I like sweet potatoes and mm. I like the idea of growing my own. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, potatoes, carrots, stuff that, you know, you can live off. I was thinking more strawberries, maybe. All right, yeah, a bit bougie, that. But. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
something proper with substance. Yeah. Taters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just having, having lambs yeah. and maybe... You, you want chickens, don't you? Mm. Which is weird because I don't like birds. You don't like birds at all, but you like eggs. I like <laughs> eggs. And I like the idea of knowing where my eggs come from. Yeah, yeah, that's also nice. Um, yeah. Having your own eggs and stuff like that feels nice to me and not buying eggs where you don't know how badly the chick has been treated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In terms of like this channel, in terms of what we're going to be making videos about, it's going to be moving into a van, living in a van with kids, mm. traveling across Europe, yeah. and then in the end, buying sort of farmland or, or land and doing it up ourselves. I think yeah. it's, uh, we've got a bright future. Yeah. <laughs> it feels fun, doesn't yeah, it, when it you think about fun. it? I think that was probably quite a nice way of uh, rounding that video off, because yeah. I feel like it might end up being a long one. Yeah, yeah you guys had a lot of questions. Yeah. I've not even answered all of them now. <laughs> no, there were tons of questions on there. There were a lot of variations of similar <laughs> questions and a lot of stuff that I think we've answered uh, by accident almost. Yeah. But we'll definitely do another one of these again because mm. there was a lot of really fun stuff on yeah. there. And um, who knows uh, what might pop up in the next uh, few weeks. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So definitely uh, stick around because this summer we've got some uh, big plans and uh, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Uh, actually next week, so maybe even in next week's video, we're talking about uh, bundling the kids into the van and driving all the way from Sweden down to England. Yeah. Driving hopefully down to the Netherlands, taking the ferry across and then up to uh, to Nottinghamshire via some uh, really nice scenic routes uh, in England on the East Coast. So yeah. We'll see, but definitely stick around for that. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be good. Apart from that, thanks very much for watching this one. Yeah, uh, and thank you very much for asking so many questions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks to everybody who's left a comment. Yeah. It's uh, really massively appreciated. Mm. And if you've managed to stick around to the end of this one, then uh, there's a, uh, a medal in the post for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks again. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.